So who is this American guy? Why does he have funny clothes and why is he in Austria? So I'll introduce my tradition a little bit. So I am from a school of Buddhism which is called Isuzuchi San Shingon Buddhism. And Isuzuchi San is a mountain which is based on the island of Shikoku in Japan. And it's a school of esoteric Buddhism. And the goal of esoteric Buddhism is to find our inner, what's called Buddha nature or inner enlightenment, but not just within our own consciousness, but in the world around us and all beings around us. And to abide in that feeling in a non-dual sense. And within our tradition, we also have another set of ascetic practices called Shugendo. And Shugendo is a mountain tradition where we do very austere practices such as climbing mountain faces with no support lines. My mother hates that. And uh, running across open fire and coals and meditating under waterfalls. So I know that's not on everybody's agenda. <laughs> but the core message of it is applicable to all beings, I believe. When I was invited to this TED Talk, I was told that the theme was connect and inspire. And I could not have been more ecstatic about that theme in the way that I was undergoing a series of conversations with some colleagues of mine about some really concerning trends in the world we live in. You know, we have mobile phones, we have PCs, and in many ways we're more connected than we've ever been in our modern world. But at the same time, everyone is expressing these same concerns of isolationism, depression, and what I think is absolutely the most fearing thing is lack of purpose. So today I wanted to introduce some metaphorical ideas that come from our tradition and how we can apply them to the world around us to help us find a sense of purpose and how we can be interconnected in our communities. Now within our tradition, we have a visual metaphor, which is called Indra's net. And Indra's net is, uh, for lack of a better term, imagining like a, our reality as a fishnet. And that each, each cross stitch is a reflective jewel, and each reflective jewel being every individual. And so the key point of that is how can we act in every moment, no matter what job, whatever background we come from, to help transmit light and bounce it like prism to prism. And then in that sense, we feel a greater self, a greater sense of interconnection and a greater purpose in our lives. So in our tradition, we use some metaphors to help us find how can we be luminous and how can we have that light bounce to others. So one example is to use the moon. The moon is something that's in everybody's life. We can see it at every night. But for us, it represents wisdom. It represents what's in Sanskrit called prajna, in the way that the moon skillfully interacts with our daily life and makes so many aspects of civilization possible, whether it be the moon phases which help us make calendars, whether it is its gravitational pull affecting the seas, helping us have balance in the ocean, whether it be seasonal indicators like a harvest moon or a blood moon. So in that way, more so than anything, it is truly unbreakable, if you will, in a way that no matter how dark the night sky gets, that light persists. No matter the condition, it's always there giving light to us in the darkest of nights. So in that way, if we choose to interact with each other in a skillful manner, we can be luminous in our own sense, in that one section of the net be luminous. But also, we can be like the sun. The sun doesn't wake up every day and say, only this side of the universe gets my heat today. The, the sun releases heat in all directions indistinguishingly. And we can apply that to love and compassion. If we have love and compassion for all beings, then that light, that feeling of love, extends to all beings across that jeweled net. And in that sense, we can learn to have a greater purpose. But I know, in a sense, that sounds like a very macrocosm metaphor, and it's very difficult to apply in our daily life. And from this moment, I'm going to be chaotic and go off script, as I've been very inspired by the country of Austria here, and I want to make a metaphor that's very applicable. If we apply this way of thinking, this moon, this sun, this jeweled net to our daily life, we can truly be a mountain in our community. If we act like the moon, if we bring that abiding, unbreakable nature of interacting with the community, we can be like a mountain that's unbreakable, abiding to the changing conditions of the weather, the ups and downs of the winds, the rains. But also, if you have loving compassion, you can give yourself to be refuge to all the beings around you. No matter what tsunamis of life come, you open yourself to everyone. The, the rivers of loving compassion flow from the top like melting glaciers down into the society. In Japan, recently, there's a new academic topic which has been started in Kyoto, and it's called environmental Japanology. And I find it very inspiring in the way that it uses what's called satoyama communities 
as an example of how we can be interconnected in our society. And Satoyama communities are these little small towns next to mountains, sandwiched between mountains, mountains and sea, but by an imperative need due to their population size, they have to be interconnected with each other. So we use a rice farmer as an example because I see so many in Japan. <laughs> The rice farmer needs to persevere. He needs to be unbreakable. He needs to abide and be thriving. So he needs to create a product that can feed himself. He needs to make enough money to earn. He needs to feed his family. And in that way, he needs to be unbreakable. But also, it's an opportunity for him, as a solid and strong mountain, to support and share love and compassion with his community via whether it be growing rice without dangerous chemicals whether it be selling the rice at a profit margin that builds trust in the people around him. And in that sense, that gives him a greater sense of purpose, because he's not just living for the self. And I think it's so troubling in the divided times that we live in that there's this dichotomy between you know, pure individualism or pure altruism, that there's no in-between. But I truly think that with this kind of mountain metaphor, with this sun and moon and jeweled net metaphor, we can find that middle ground. When I was growing up, my father used to tell me, to fill the cups of joy of others, you need to have a cup of joy yourself. And I find that as times go by, people find that to be more and more of a selfish comment, but I think it reflects a really inner true meaning in which case that we need to be powerful, we need to be compassionate, we need to thrive, to be able to help others. And I hate to end the presentation on a really cheesy note, but I love dad jokes, so I'm, I'm just gonna go for it. If we become mountains in our own self, we abide no matter the changes of time. We have love and compassion and we help others around us. We give them refuge, we support them, we lift them up. Then truly, we help them become mountains in themselves as well. And here's the dad joke. If we continue to do this with love and compassion and wisdom, then we can make an Alps range out of humanity. Thank you very much. <laughs>